We're updating our transmission system. A lot of construction, a lot of soil disruption, different things. And our stakeholders, our business investors want to know, are we doing this in a responsible way? Are we doing this in a way that's not gonna harm the environment? And what are we doing to support biodiversity? Pollinators and native vegetation creates biodiversity. We're approached by different individuals, different organizations to put down native vegetation, native plants. When you do a construction project, you disrupt the soils and you have to restore that area. And you could do it with typical turf grasses, which don't always work really well, or you could do it with native vegetation, which would support bees, butterflies, birds, etc. If you go to the produce section of your grocery store, I would say over half of that produce is dependent on pollinators. That's bees, beetles, flies, butterflies. We think of honeybees, right? Tim and I got to talking and there's so much potential here to make an incremental switch in what we're doing and, and switch over to a native seed mix that would add so much value to these areas when construction is complete. It's something we have to do, there's no getting around it, you know, for stormwater, water quality purposes, you have to reestablish that vegetation on a site. So why not do it a little bit better? It's around 2016, 2017, we worked with several groups to develop the seed mixes. And we wanted to test different mixes for different purposes. 2019, we did the seeding. It was pretty simple, nothing extraordinary. We hit it with an herbicide to kill off the weeds and then it set for a couple months. We dragged a harrow, a chain harrow, which kind of disrupts the crust, the surface crust and hand broadcasted the seeds and straw mulched. And then actually within a few weeks, we had some germination of the seeds and the plot started to grow. It wasn't all that impressive in 2019. By the end of that year, we had to mow it. You, you get a lot of invasive grasses that, and weedy grasses that come in and you mow that. And what that does is it creates some sunlight then for the forbs and flowers and things that you really want to grow. Last year, 2020 was our first full year and it just popped. Pollinator plot looked really nice. Our uh, bird plot is doing especially well. The deer plot has a lot of clovers and alfalfa. It will get about you know this tall when it's when it's full grown, but this is common milkweed, and this is the plant that's getting a lot of attention right now for um, supporting the monarch butterfly. Grayhead, grayheaded coneflower here. This is Monarda. It's a native wildflower. It is summer blooming, and it's particularly loved by hummingbirds based on the shape of the flower. This will be. Um, Black-eyed Susan, all of this. It'll look really nice once that grows. Since these plots are open to the public, it'll be a great tool for school groups and wildlife groups to come out here and document what they find. For municipalities in particular who have more um, native seed programs or arborists who really want to see native plants used in their community, having the ability to bring them on site and show them a pilot program that we're using and show them the type of growth that we're able to get with native seed and mixes is very attractive when we're talking about projects within a community. My hope for this site is that it will serve as a model for different types of vegetation that can be used all across our service territory in different settings. I think we're showing that right away can be habitat. What we do in Oklahoma will look different than what we do in Ohio, but that's what we're showing here. We're showing that there's many different seed mixes that can be used and they can work and they will be very compatible in a right away setting.